Hi everybody, this is Mr. Zarzak, and in this screencast, I'm going to show you how to apply Coulomb's Law for multiple groupings of charges. So let's get right to it. All right, so I have three charges, okay, in a line here, and we're asked to determine the net force on each of these charges. Okay, so the first thing I want to point out is that the charges are labeled in what are called microcoulombs. They have this little mu prefix, which we've seen before for, for coefficients of friction. Okay, but this mu is also used as a metric prefix. So when you see this as applied to like microcoulomb, okay, that's what this is, means micro. Okay, and micro means one one millionth or 10 to the negative six power. Okay, so just to use this as an example, this is three microcoulombs. Okay, so this charge here, which is three microcoulombs, this is equivalent to three times 10 to the negative six coulombs or in engineering notation, 3e to the minus 6 coulombs. If I wanted to write this out in standard notation, okay, so that'd be point, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 coulombs. Okay, so all of these are just equivalent numbers. I'm going to work my problems today. I'm going to be using primarily engineering notation just because it's the shortest and the quickest, and you'll see it on your calculator too. Okay, so let's go ahead and get right into this. So I'm going to delete out all this so that we have some fresh space to work with. Okay, the key to doing all this is like so many law, or Newton's Laws problems is you got to stay organized. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to assign each of these charges a number. So charge one, charge two, charge three. All right, and since we want the net force on each, we're just going to start with charge number one. Okay, we'll keep the diagram up at the top here separate so we can kind of refer back to it. All right, when determining the net force on a charge, whenever we've got multiple forces, heck, whenever we've got any forces, really the first step, and we've seen this before, is, yep, we're going to draw our free body diagram. Okay, to get the direction of the forces, we're going to apply what we know, which is opposite charges attract, like charges repel. Okay, so if I just focus on these two here for a second, I've got a grouping of positive and negative charges, so they're going to attract one another. Now, our focus is on the one microcoulomb, Okay, and so what that means is that the one microcoulomb is going to get attracted to the negative two microcoulombs. It's going to get pulled this way. All right, so that force, I'm actually going to put that in blue just so that we see that it's coming from the negative charge. Okay, so if I draw my little arrow, now this is an electrostatic force. Okay, the way that I, the convention that I use to keep track of all this, I say with this force is acting on charge number one and it's coming from charge two. So I would write this as F1 comma two, the force on one from two. Okay, so it'll take a little bit in getting used to, but you will get used to this, all right? If I look at the interaction between these two, okay, so pretend like, pretend like this is in here for a second because it really doesn't matter in terms of the force that we're gonna get from the three microcoulomb. These are both positive charges and like charges repel. So if I took these two and just had these two, they would push away from one another which means that if it was just this three microcoulomb here, okay, it would push the one microcoulomb that way. Okay, the three microcoulomb would get pushed this way. See, they repel away from one another. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and label a second force on my free body diagram. And I'm going to name this one F1, comma, 3 for the force on charge 1 coming from charge 3. All right. Once I have this, all right, well, now I'm ready to go ahead and compute using Coulomb's law. Okay, so let's just start with this F12. And that was so that would be K Q1 Q2 over R squared. All right, and so K, that's our Coulomb's constant. That's 9 times 10 to the 9th, or 9 billion Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared. Remember, those units are the, there just to make this come out in Newtons when we're done. Charge 1 is the 1 microcoulomb, so that's 1e to the minus 6 power coulomb, so 1 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. My second charge is the negative 2 microcoulomb, so 2e negative 6 coulombs. Notice that when I plug in that value, I'm just doing magnitude. Okay, we're going to compute the magnitude of the force and the direction we get how we always get it, which is from our free body diagram. Okay, as far as the distance goes, okay, well, that's just going to be the distance between charge 1 and charge 2, so that's already labeled there for me, so that's convenient. Okay, so it's a 0.7 meters. Don't forget to square it. Okay, so if I plug this into my calculator correctly, 
Okay, you should find a force of point zero, oops, pardon me, three, six, seven newtons. Okay, and that force goes to the right. All right, and just so that it's all like pretty and fancy and stuff, we'll make that blue, not you. Okay, so now we've got it there if we need it. All right. I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process for the force on 1 from 3. Okay, so when I do it this way, so I do K, Q1, Q3. See, I've changed the subscript just to make it a little easier on myself to keep track of what I'm doing. Divided by R squared. All right, so that K, 9 times 10 to the 9th, Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. Okay, Q1 is the 1 microcoulomb, so 1E minus 6 coulombs. Okay, charge 3 is the 3 microcoulomb, so 3E minus 6. Okay, divided by the distance. Now, the distance between them, I've got the distance between each of the set of charges, so to get the total distance, I just add it up. So I've got 0.7 meters plus 0.5 meters, and that quantity gets squared. All right, so if I go ahead and compute that, so this is F13, throw that in my calculator. Okay, if I do it right, I should find 0 0.01875 newtons. Okay, notice that even though I've got a three microcoulomb here, because of the distance, all right, that force is, is much weaker. Okay, and from my free body diagram, I can see that the force arrow points to the left, so I'm just gonna write that down here. All right, so I've got the magnitudes and directions of my forces, so I can now compute the net force acting on charge number one. Um, I have not yet defined a positive direction of motion, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that and say my positive direction is to the right. All right, so then to determine the net force acting on number one, I just go to my free body diagram and say, okay, well, I have one force that's positive. And then I have the other force that's negative, which means I take them and I subtract them. Okay, so there's my net force equation. So I'm gonna sub in my values. Okay, so I got my point zero three six seven newtons to the right, minus my point zero one eight seven five newtons to the left. And so that net force acting on number one do my math right here, so point zero one seven nine eight newtons. Okay, and that's a positive number, so that tells me that that is going to be to the right. Okay, now if I go back and I look at my diagram here, just so we can see what's going on. All right, the attraction from the negative charge, that's number two, is going to outpull the repulsive push from the three microcoulomb pushing to the left. All right. So even though the magnitude of this charge is larger, okay, in Coulomb's law, distance is more important, and this is the closer one. So it outpulls the push <laughs> from the three microcoulomb. That's a mouthful. All right. So we've got one down. We got two to go. All right. So let's go ahead and start our analysis for charge number two here. So same way we did it before. Okay, so this is for that little negative two microcoulomb. All right. If I use this picture just as like my guide here, we've well, got opposites attract. So if I look at these two, they're going to attract one another. So the little negative is going to get pulled this way. And if I look at these two, well, we still got opposites to track, so my little negative is going to get pulled this way. Okay, so I got two forces. Which one's bigger? We got to calculate. And that's exactly what we're going to do. All right, so I've got one force this way. Okay, this is the force that acts on charge two coming from charge three, which is a positive charge, which is why I drew it in red. Okay, and likewise, there's a force that's going this way. Okay, and that is a force that's acting on two, but this one's coming from one. All right. Now, good news. When I go to compute the force on charge two coming from charge one, all right, well, honestly, guys, 
I know the magnitude of that force. See, we know from third law that if one pulls on two, two pulls on one. How hard? Just as hard. Okay? Just in the opposite direction. Now, if I needed to calculate, I could calculate it, but I mean, honestly, this is what I would be doing. I would just be flip-flopping these two numbers, but that's commutative property of multiplication. That doesn't change anything, okay? So there's nothing really that we need to compute. I've already shown my work, all right? So all I really need to do is transpose my number and change the direction. So F21 is going to be this 0 0.0376 newtons, okay? And I can see it from my free body diagram. That's going to point to the left. Okay, equal force, just opposite direction. All right. So moving right along, okay, to the other force. Now this I got to compute. I haven't done it yet. So it's K, Q2, Q3. Notice I changed the subscripts there over R squared to help me keep track of what I'm doing. And actually here, let's just keep this consistent did the intermediary steps in black, so let's stick with that, I think. We'll just write our answers with color. Okay, so I have 9 times 10 to the 9th, Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. Okay, times Q2. All right, the Q2, that's the little guy in the middle, so that's the 2 micro coulomb. Okay, so I got 2 e to the negative 6 coulombs. Notice, again, even though it's a negative charge, I'm not putting the negative sign in there. I'm just doing magnitudes because I'm just determining the magnitude of the force. And... Q3 is the 3 microcoulombs, so 3e negative 6 coulombs, okay, divided by the distance between the 2 and the 3. So I'm going to look back up here and say the 2 and the 3 are separated by half a meter. And don't forget to square. All right, so if I plug into my calculator correctly, I'm going to find a force on 2 from 3 of point. 216 newtons. Okay, and I can see it right from my free body diagram that points to the right, so I'm gonna put that in there as well. All right, and if I look at the size of the force, you can already see it's much, much bigger. I've got a bigger magnitude charge over here, and I've got a smaller distance. Okay, so all the things that would make that electrostatic force bigger are bigger. When I did the net force in one, I defined positive to the right. So I need to, I really need to stick with that. It gets pretty confusing if you start changing the positive directions. Okay, so I'm going to if I do the net force on number two. Okay, so I got two force arrows, so two terms in my equation. Okay, my positive term is F23 because it points to the right. My negative term is F21 because it points to the left. So there's my equation. So net force on two is this 0.216 newtons to the right. And I've got the F21, which is the 0 0.0376 newtons that goes left. So when I take the difference between these two, okay, I get that net force, which is gonna be 0 0.1798 three newtons. Probably don't need that three, but that's okay. And it's a positive number. That's going to be to the right. All right. Two down, one to go. Okay, good news, though, all right, is that each one of these becomes less work. I think some of you probably already picked up on why, but we'll go through it and do it anyway. So this is charge number three. Okay, so if I go back to that original picture, all right, so I'm focusing on charge number three here. Okay, so if it was just these two opposites attract, okay, so they would attract one another, which just means that my little three micro coulomb would get pulled by this negative charge this way. All right, likewise, if it was just these two, okay, like charges, they repel one another. Okay, so if it was just these two, three would get pushed away by, by one, so there'd be a force like this way. There'd be a force this way too, just same size, just opposite direction from third law. Okay, so I got two forces in two different directions. All right, so if I come on down here, all right, it's just fresh in my mind. So I've got this repulsive force acting on charge three here. Here we go. Okay, so we would call this the force on three coming from charged one, repelling it away. 
And then we've also got this attractive force Go in this direction, this would be the force on three coming from charge two. All right. The good news, okay, is that I don't have to compute anything because up here I computed the force of two on three, so the force of three on two would just be the same size force, so 0.216 newtons. Okay, it just points the opposite direction, so to the left, and I can see it plain as day right from my free body diagram. All right, and then for this force of three on one, all right, if I back up a little bit, I have already found the force of one on three, so, or at least the magnitude anyway, so 0 0.01875 newtons, so 0 0.01875 newtons. Okay, and I can see it on my free body diagram. Okay, that poor force points to the right. Okay, opposite of force 1, 3, which points to the left. All right, so once I have my two forces, I can write my net force equation acting on 3 again. I set right as positive, so I'm going to stick with that. Okay, so my F3, comma 1 is my positive vector. My F3, comma 2 is my negative vector. And so when I go through... And I compute 0, 1, 8, 7, 5 newtons for 3, 1 minus 0.216 newtons, which is that force 3, 2 to the left. Okay, and so when I compute the net force acting on number 3 here, okay, I'm going to see that I actually get a negative number. Okay, so if I just plug in my calculator, I'm going to get this, 0.1972 newtons. Okay, and then here is the first time where that negative really does tell me something, which is the direction. Okay, what this really says is that the net force acting on 3 has a magnitude of 0.1972 newtons, all right, and it acts to the left. All right, this right here, this is the answer. All right, direction and magnitude, oh yeah. All right, so kind of tedious, but nothing we haven't seen seen before. It's really just a matter of staying organized. Okay, so to help you with that, I have a set of general problem-solving skills that you can do here. Okay, and the stuff that's written in black is all stuff that we've used before, okay? So, like, when we're dealing with forces, if you haven't picked up on this yet, guys, we're really back in Newton's Laws again. Okay, we're just dealing with a new kind of force that we call the electrostatic force, all right? So we're going to take and we're going to make a little picture, or we're going to use the one that's given, okay? And that's going to lead us to be able to draw our free body diagram, okay? The directions of those forces on our free body diagram come from like charges repel, opposites attract, okay? So that's really where the thinking's got to happen is which way do these arrows point, all right, from there, it's really just a matter of staying organized and applying Coulomb's Law so you get all those magnitudes of all those different force pieces. All right, if this is a two-dimensional problem, so if your angles were involved, you'd break them into components, and then you write your net force equation. So if you've got a 1D problem like we just did, then you only got to worry about one dimension. If, if not, well, then you've got to have a net force in the X direction and the net force in the Y direction. But from there, it's you solve for the magnitude of the net force using Pythagorean theorem. Okay, and then if you need to get the direction because it's a 2D problem, um, you just pick your favorite inverse trig function and you're done. All right, so most of this is review. It's just been a little while. So think of it as a bit of a refresher on Newton's Laws plus, okay, this new player, which is Coulomb's Law. All right, so that about does it. All right, now you got to go and do your own calculations. So I say thanks for watching this screencast and we will uh, see you next time.